when we design something that flies through the air, we usually think it's supposed to be streamlined. It's supposed to have stabilizing fins on the back. Um, of course, we have to consider the center of gravity. And then when we get to a rocket, we also have to consider the center of gravity and also something called the center of pressure, which we could also call the aerodynamic balance point. In the case of an airplane or a dart, the center of gravity and center of pressure are more or less static, but in a rocket, as you're using fuel, these are constantly moving forward. In order to keep the Saturn V, for example, pointed in the right direction, it used thrust vectoring. Just like on a jet ski, you can control the angle of the thrust to steer. But unlike the jet ski, the Saturn V also had stabilizing fins, which would become the only means of controlling the rocket in the event of an engine shutdown. Now another way we can keep an object stable in flight is using angular momentum. A football without a spin would just tumble through the air. Simply put, angular momentum is the same force that a spinning top uses to keep from falling over. And it's absolutely essential in keeping a bullet stable in flight, especially when you have the center of pressure way ahead of the center of gravity. If you applied these dynamics to a non-spinning rocket, it would be completely unstable. With that being said, a viewer designed this projectile and challenged us to make it fly stable through the air. Hmm, okay. It's a super secret scientific supersonic mass accelerator. It's definitely not a firearm per YouTube's rules. Today's submission comes from Evan Perry of Texas, a vital contributor to this channel who's designed many different projectiles for us to test out. The design seems to be made out of two stainless steel knobs with a length of about two inches. The weight is about 16 grams or just over half an ounce. We'll be using a double Sabo system which will keep this projectile centered in the barrel of our mass accelerator which is totally not a firearm. The front Sabo is split which in theory will cause it to fall away from the projectile as it leaves the barrel. Now this projectile is anything but streamlined. The center of gravity is right in the middle. It has no rocket fins on it. Yet, somehow we're gonna make this thing fly straight through the air. Okay, we got the uh, Chinese printed circuit board. We'll see, and now how far away are we? 16 yards? 16 yards. Okay, let's see what it does to the printed circuit board. I'm ready. All right, here we go. To add to the challenge of this project, this is being conducted without the aid of spin stabilization. In test number one we had good Sabo separation, but had no stability of the projectile. And there was no chance of it ever stabilizing. And to be completely honest, this was exactly what I thought these projectiles would do. I'm ready when you are. All right. In test number two, we had a degree of stability, but a failure in the Sabo separation. This is pretty much the opposite of what we saw in test number one. If we look closer, we can see that the projectile is not tumbling through the air, and it's not until it's inches away from the Kevlar backstop that we see separation of the Sabos. And I should mention that the front Sabo is green and black, and the rear Sabo is white. Charge the... Flux capacitor, okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Holy smokes, accurate. On test number three, we finally got the results that we were looking for. In fact, this exceeded our expectations of this projectile. We had a clean separation of the Sabo system, and the projectile was stable in flight and very accurate on top of that. We're still at 16 yards or something like that? Yes. That's a long stretch for something that's as... considering our setup, that's um, amazing we're able to hit it at all. We'll see if that continues <laughs> or not. 
I may not know what I'm doing, but I'm good at it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, sun is out. I'm ready. Here we go. In test number four, again, we had good stability and relatively good accuracy. It was only off by about an inch. And considering the experimental nature of this test, that's not unreasonable. Now you may be looking at this and saying that's not that stable, it's kind of oscillating around. And that's actually a big clue on what is keeping this projectile from completely tumbling through the air. The tail moves in one direction and there's some unseen force there that is moving it back again and again. If we were using spin stabilization you probably wouldn't see that at all. Now since the projectile is flying at a supersonic speed we have a bow shock wave and also a tail shock wave. The tail shock wave does allow a little bit of movement of the tail of the projectile. The shock waves are only present while the projectile is supersonic and it's relatively weak so the projectile must leave the barrel as straight as possible. Lead plate. Okay, I don't think it'll do much to the lead plate. Uh, so far <laughs> we've been able to hit the target. Not. Yeah, you going right for the center? Not real accurate, yes. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Engage. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh my. Not the table. <laughs> I'm kind of glad we did the lead plate now. It's like, eh, it's not going to do anything to the lead plate. Lead plate too strong. Powerful strong. It stopped it. <laughs> Very slight bulge. Yeah, I see that. Oh my gosh. It looked like it was flying straight from my very small camera um, screen. Somewhat accurate. I mean, it's only off by maybe an inch or so. I was trying for here. <laughs> for something that I thought would never work, that would uh, that I thought that would give us a lot of headaches just to, to test because it's so long. It's difficult to load. Yeah. Not bad. That uh, front discarding Sabo that you created. Yeah. <laughs> that was the key to making them work. Kept it somewhat centered in the barrel. Yeah. If you keep it centered so you don't have any, you know, it comes out nice and straight, it has a pretty good chance of flying straight. Keep flying straight. That one is not coming out of there. Yeah, that one's just buried. Awesome. Grand finale time. Okay, <laughs> we got a Danny's softball. It does not sound right. Okay, you're aiming at the center, of course. I'm ready. Wow. I think. Got it. I think you got it. You got to give Danny some credit for that shot. Not too bad. About as close as you at and accurate as you can get with our setup. Now, apparently that one was flying straight. I think it was. We've only got a nice <laughs> hole. Don't tell Greg. The patented finger wiggle. Don't tell Greg. What do you think of Greg's new shirts that he designed? I like that. <laughs> Did you? I didn't know he that I didn't know he could do that. A full pass through. Oh, that's, I didn't think, I thought it would be sticking out the side or, or, in, in or it. miss or <laughs> anything but that. I never, ever thought it would go through. That's a good, um, 
we ought to sign that. We'll sign that and give it away to someone on Patreon. Does that sound like a good idea? Sounds like a plan to me. Once again, another fantastic design by Evan. Thank you very much for sending these. And thanks to everyone for watching the video. Not sure how you found it because YouTube is kind of hiding us from even our subscribers. We also want to thank our channel members and our Patreon supporters. These folks are the gasoline for our engine. Now, I can't be the only person annoyed by those sponsored videos where they just end up being infomercials. So we always need your help, and Patreon is a good way of doing it. Thank you.